Hi. So after five videos, if you have been following along, you already know everything you need to implement your very own federated learning pipelines using Flower for simulation. You know how to take an off-the-shelf dataset and partition it so every client gets its own local dataset. You know how to design your Flower clients and in particular how to set up the feed and evaluate methods that are the key elements for clients to do local drawing and local evaluation. You know how to choose a strategy and how to configure elements like how many clients are involved in tr during the feed, how many clients are involved in the evaluate, how does the function that performs global evaluation looks like, for instance. And you know already how to start a simulation and how to assign different CPU and GPU resources to your clients. If you have been following along with the code and maybe you have even launched some of the simulations in your systems. So you already have an idea on how you can see, you can configure your simulations so you maximize resource utilizations. What this video is about is about highlighting other, com other considerations that you might need in order to understand why sometimes allocating more GP resources to your clients doesn't necessarily translate into faster simulations. So this is what this video is about. And also it's an invitation to tell you that if, if you are really particularly interested on simulating federated learning workloads, we are welcoming any contributor that wants to take our virtual client engine uh, to the next level. So please uh, join us on GitHub or ping us on Slack which you can find the, the link below if you have any suggestions or if you want to contribute. Let's get on with the video. First, we need to understand what are the resource utilization of our clients. And we have already looked into this in the previous part of the tutorial, right? We were looking into what's the VRAM usage of my client. And based on that, we were able to adjust the, the GPU resources that our virtual client engine allocates to every client. Sometimes if we want to optimize our simulation even further, well, we need to look into other potential bottlenecks. For instance, maybe our model is, here, is bigger. So one of the ideas would be, can I reduce the path size during local training on the client side so I can, I can pack more clients to, and train them concurrently? That's one idea. Sometimes memory is not the main limitation of your simulation, but instead it's the way you read this data set. Maybe the way you are reading the data set and creating the batch, batches is very expensive because potentially a either slow reading from a slow disk or the preprocessing of this data is very expensive. So that might be the source of your bottleneck. So changing the GPU resources, for instance, might not do anything. Or maybe the, the, the bottleneck is not in the client side, but it's on the server. For instance, you can think of designing an experiment where you sample 10,000 clients per round, which you can totally do with simulation. But then your aggregation, if you are using a very vanilla aggregation method, might wait for all these clients to finish and then do the aggregation of these 1,000 models, which might not only be slow, but also might uh, result in a very high memory utilization on the server machine. So those are some ideas on how to identify and optimize your simulations with Flower and the virtual client engine. And of course, I want to talk about troubleshooting briefly. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, Flower and Ray, they are both open source frameworks and at some point when we introduced Ray as part of the virtual client, uh, Ray behaved in a slightly different way for the small portion of the many, many other things Ray does that we care about in the virtual client engine. And that's why we don't use the latest version of Ray, but instead a slightly er earlier version, which works great. Um, sometimes your simulation might fail because maybe your client, you are telling your client to look for a data set in one location that doesn't exist, for instance. So because a client is running a parallel Python process, it can happen that those processes are not properly terminated. So when you encounter this problem, or maybe when you want to early terminate an experiment, 
in addition to do control C, you might want to also run this ray stop dash F command, which will ensure that all the uh, Python processes spawned by the virtual client engine are killed uh, immediately. Simulation is a very fascinating, uh, even fascinating research topic, right? Because it very much relates to systems and how to make better use of your systems to run a particular workload, in this case, theoretical learning. So if you are using simulation extensively, if there is a issue you encounter with simulation that you would like us to look into, or you are curious about how to do certain things with simulation, uh, please free to open uh, either a suggestion in GitHub or raise an issue using the simulation label.